if we don't live by law, then what is our motivation for proper Christian living? We could say it's God's grace, and in part that is true, but there's even something behind the grace of God. Probably a number of you or many of you might even figure it out. Just think about it for a little bit. We're going to look at that here in just a moment. And Pastor Tim Holsher, and we're continuing to look at the present ministry of the Spirit in the lives of New Testament Christians. We've looked at his work of baptism by which he puts us into Christ, and then his work of regeneration by which he puts Christ in us. And we've been looking at how these two work together, and as we set our minds to who God says we are in Christ, then down here the Holy Spirit is able to work out Christ in us. He's able to live out the eternal life that we have because Christ is in us. And that manifests or makes visible what we what our English Bibles call godliness. It's a word that literally meant a, something that honors God or shows or demonstrates a, a genuine devotion to God. And so we've been seeing the last couple days or the last couple studies that as believers, we don't live by law. In fact, if we live by law, we don't live out this this godliness, this, this God-honoring way of life. Not today. And so we're coming over here to John chapter 13 to begin with in verse 34. And Jesus is meeting just with the 11 disciples. Judas has left the room a little bit before this. And uh, he says, I am giving you a new commandment. We've talked about this before. And that new commandment is that you love one another as I have loved you. Now under the law, Jesus said that the highest commandment under the law or of the law was to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul and mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. But Jesus has now for us anticipating something new where you and I have, are going to have him dwelling in us and the spirit dwelling in us, something that those Old Testament people did not have at that time, that because we have this, he's raising the bar significantly by now saying, don't love God with everything you've got. I'm now telling you to love one another like I've loved you. And he did that just moments before by being their Lord, or being their Lord, acting the part of a servant, actually washing their feet and demonstrating that that's how we love. We love by serving. Having said that then, we come down to John 14, 20, uh, where we read, and the one then who has my commandments. Now, Jesus is going to restate this command many way, uh, several different ways, because there's not just, when we serve believers, there's many ways that we serve believers. And so he, you can look at this as commandments in terms of all the different ways as believers that we lay down our lives for brothers, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. And he says, so the one who has my commandments and keeps them, keeps them safe, guards them, this is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him. Now when he says loved by my father and I will love him, he's looking at an activity that they're going to do. When God loves us, there's always something he does. He acts. He doesn't just sit in heaven and have warm fuzzies. Son doesn't either. It's always an activity. And what Jesus says is, I will love him and I will reveal, or, or overhear this Greek word, and find it so. He says, is to make myself uh, plainly visible. I'm going to manifest myself. We don't use that word manifest a great deal in modern English. So our, a lot of our modern translations use the word reveal. But literally, I'm going to, I'm going to shine through, the, through you. I'm going to shine myself through you. You're going to get to see me living out through you. Others may get to see that too. Well, if you watch another believer really love like Christ loved, and you can't see what's really going on in your heart, you can only see the action on the outside, but if you give them the benefit of the doubt, you may be actually getting to see Christ shining through them. But you know who really gets to see this? It's when you are living this way. When you're loving, you get to see him shining out through you. And so Judas not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, what has happened that you're going to reveal yourself to us and not to the world? How is the world not going to see it? They want to know this. In verse 23, and Jesus replies and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will follow or literally keep or guard my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and we will make our dwelling with him. 
And this word that's translated dwelling, this word mane, is a word that has to do with, with coming and being settled down and comfortable and at home. It doesn't just mean to remain in a, in a location. Been through this all through every place where this word occurs, and it always brings an emphasis, not always as, as clear or as evident, I'll, I'll be honest, but most all of the time has the idea of to remain in a place and be okay with it, to be comfortable with it, not just be there. And he says, we're going to come and we're going to make our dwelling, our place where we're comfortable. Why are they comfortable there? Because you are loving with the kind of love that the Father and the Son have. You're loving with their kind of love. If they're inside a believer, they, they dwell in believers that exercise hate. And the New Testament indicates that believers sometimes hate. And Paul has to tell them to cut out, be, quit being angry and quit having that kind of hate. Are they comfortable in the believer that's angry and hating? No, that's not a comfortable environment. They're still there, but they're just not comfortable. And it's when they're comfortable there that they're actually showing themselves out through us. And that agrees with the statement Jesus had made earlier here in John chapter 3, when he said in verse 21, but anyone who lives by the truth or does the truth, practices the truth, comes to the light that his works may be shown uh, a different a form of a word that's related to that word to to shine forth or make manifest or our, as our English modern English Bibles had reveal it's a related form of that to make oneself plainly visible here that it may be plainly visible that that the, his works are accomplished or are uh, literally the works are worked by God. See, God actually is accomplishing those things through us. And you know, Paul said that as much as that, and we've looked at this verse before in Philippians 3, verse 9, but Paul said one of his goals was, he says, I want to get rid of all the stuff that I, that I boast in, all this earthly stuff, all my accomplishments. I only want to gain Christ. He says, I want to be found in him not having my own kind of righteousness, which is from law. And he's not talking about an unsaved person here. He's talking about himself as a Christian. As a Christian, I don't want to resort to law for my practical righteousness. And lots of us as Christians resort to law, sometimes because we're taught to, but I think we just kind of default that way. It's easy for us just to resort to a set of rules for daily living instead of really living in his love and being motivated by his love and grace for our activity, we end up being motivated by trying to earn something or trying to avoid something, trying to, to measure up to being good enough, which that we should have that all settled when we get saved. But you know, we wrestle, a lot of us wrestle with that a lot through a lot of our Christian life. And Paul says, I don't want a righteousness of my own that's derived from law. I want the righteousness that's through faith that's in Christ, a righteousness which comes from God on the basis or is upon or rests on faith. And he's talking, as we've said, this is about Christian living. You know what that righteousness is going to look like? Well, we saw it over in John 14. It's going to look like acts of love. It's going to look like acts of love by which we serve other believers. It's not the only way, but it's going to be one of the chief ways that we're going to demonstrate this kind of righteousness. Paul says, that's what I want. So is there a motivation other than law for us as Christians? Yeah, it's his kind of love to be motivated, to rest in who he says we are in Christ so that we are motivated by his love to lay down our lives for others, to serve others in love. That, that's a much higher motivation, a much higher standard than the law. And it's the kind of standard that when you're living by that and you're loving in that way, that you will as a believer, because you're getting to see him live out his life and his love through you, will encourage you in having a good day in the Lord. Thank you for joining me today.